Hi there, Loy Macedo, speaking to you from LoyMacedo.com. Who is Loy Macedo? Think person branding. Okay, it seems uh, Qatar is really in the spotlight almost. Everything Qatar is doing, uh, they're kind of uh, reporting it globally. Okay, so now you have uh, <laughs> the legendary figure of some Muslims, a few Muslims, uh, the great legend. I... I I consider him uh, <laughs> an entertainment, a kind of comedian, Zakir Nayak. Okay, so this uh, this this funny guy. I mean, uh, l let's face it. Okay, there are some uh, Muslims who really uh, venerate him, who look up to him with so much of respect, and um, who literally consider him one of the greatest things that has happened to uh, Islam or. You know, he, he's like a teacher uh, who teaches Islam. So they respect him a lot. And especially we have many Indians who look up to Zakir Naik. And if you criticize him, they will, you know, take it very personally. Okay. So I've had that. I have previous videos where I've uh, spoken, given my opinion about Zakir Naik. You can just Google search uh, on, search it on YouTube. Okay. Um, and I've told you what I think about Zakir Naik. Zakir Naik is just a, a chap who has uh, memorized verses, phrases of uh, the Quran. And uh, to impress people, he rambles and chatters and spurts out these verses uh, and uh, these quotes at such a fast pace where you just don't know, oh, in chapter 7 of, um, you know, chapter 7, verse uh, 14, uh, Allah Ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad, you know, in uh, this surah and Shia and blah, 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 he'll go on. And my dear friend, what do you think about that? He'll just go on and on and on and on. Okay. Um, so you can be impressed, uh, but that is not how a debate takes place. That is not how a discussion takes place. Uh, and there are videos which debunk uh, and uh, mock Zakir Naik. Okay, so that is Zakir Naik. Um, I, I don't take him seriously. Uh, if you do take him seriously, all the best to you. Okay, so Zakir Naik is a character in itself, popular with the Muslim world. So now in one of his comedic videos, <laughs> he has uh, uh, given his expertise, his spiritual expertise on the the haram that football is because you know as per him and his his view of islam um entertainment is not good obviously alcohol is not good obviously fornicating is not good obviously lgbtq is not good obviously anything that doesn't fit into his perspective of islam is not good uh, that is why if you ask zakir nai uh, very explicitly um, any other religion other than Islam, is it true? He would absolutely deny it. If you ask him, is Hinduism true? He would deny it. Uh, for him, only Islam and Allah is true. So he lives in that small little bubble. Okay. So according uh, to him, uh, obviously, uh, football is haram. Football as a profession is good. I'll put the link. I'll put the link of his video. You can have a look and what he stated. Okay. In fact, let me play the video now. Let me play the video. It's it's around uh, 30, 40 seconds. Listen to the video and um, give me your thoughts. Wait, here is the video. Let's play it now. That's the reason he gives the fatwa for these reasons. He says football as a profession is haram. I do agree with the great extent to Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, but not totally. What he's talking about football as a profession is on the very high level. I agree with him to a great extent on the high level professionalism if you become a world class football player. If you're playing for the World Cup or for the Euro Cup or that level, you know, the top level, the top four or five football, on that level, he is correct to a great extent. Okay, so here we got uh, Dr. Zakir Naik. See, um, <laughs> um, I, 
I, I don't know about you, okay? I don't know. I, I, I don't take him seriously. He has, uh, for example, he has a PhD or he has expertise in the Quran or in Islam. It's more like saying, um, you know, this guy has a PhD in Marvel Comics or this guy has a, he has, uh, he's a doctorate in uh, DC Comics, I mean, or fairy tales. I mean, this is just a religion uh, uh, whom the rest of the non-Muslim world does not take seriously. So it's up to you to take him seriously or not. So I find him silly. I find him absolutely silly. Now, coming to Dr. Zakir Naik, not Dr. Zakir, why am I calling him? He, he's, Moniker is doctor. He's not a doctor. Okay, Zakir Naik, uh, he being invited to Qatar. What do I think about it? See, uh, in Qatar, Qatar is a Muslim country. Okay, Qatar believes in Islam. Qatar believes in Allah. Okay. If they invite Zakir Naik or they invite uh, the uh, Ayatollah of Iran, uh, let's say a religious scholar from there, or they call uh, Pope Benedict or I don't know who's the Pope right now, or they call Hindu priests, wh whomsoever they call, if in case they call. I don't see a problem in calling someone uh, to pray, to pray, okay? So if they are calling Zakir Naik to pray, if they are calling some mutawa, if they are calling a priest to pray, I perfectly do not see what is the problem. Yes, for a, let's say English football fans, they might find this very odd. For someone who has never heard a Muslim prayer, like my first wife, who is Irish, when she heard, uh, you know, when she was in uh, Dubai, and she automatically heard all these mosques praying. She was like, what the hell is this, you know? And when she heard them praying, you know, with their, you know, how they say the chants, she found it very bizarre and very strange. In the same way, if a foreigner were to go to, let's say, a Buddhist monk, or he were to go to, let's say, a um, uh, Hindu temple, and they hear the bhajana, jay shri ram, and, you know, they'll feel a little different because they don't do it. In the same way, like when I was in Dublin and I was eating with my fingers, they were like, yeah, how do you eat with your fingers? Oh, you must be backward. And this is nearly 25 years ago. So for someone who has not traveled, for someone who has not seen cultures, for someone who has lived within a small bubble, for them, they might find this odd. But for people who have traveled around the world, praying to Allah, Jesus, uh, Lord Shiva, whatever, I don't see what is the problem. And praying in itself is good. You're asking for peace, blessing, whatever. Okay. Um, so I don't have an issue with that. I don't think there should be an issue. As far as inviting him, what I feel is Qatar, see, Qatar's leadership is, uh, he's a head of a country. And he has to juggle between keeping the religious folks happy, um, the people who are very powerful and they believe in Islam, then the people who are powerful, but they are broad-minded. Then obviously the Western community. Then obviously the World Cup, the FIFA. He has quite a number of people to keep happy. And he can't keep one side happy and ignore the rest. See, remember this much. FIFA in the World Cup is a temporary phase, a cash injection, a kind of branding exercise to position Qatar as uh, a global hub. Okay? Now, FIFA will come and FIFA will go. Uh, football matches will get over in another few months. But then the Qatari Sheikh would have to live with the Muslim neighbors, will have to live with these Muslim people, will have to live with the Muslim leaders. And, you know, you wouldn't want to destroy the relationship or the credibility with the people who you're having such a long-term relationship with. It's like, for example, uh, let's say, to give you a simple analogy, I have a I have a joint family. I have my father, mother, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, um, brother's family, sister's family, wife's family, everyone here staying here. For example, it's a joint family. And then I have a guest who's coming down from United States, and he and his girlfriend, and we are very conservative, but they come like, you know, very open-minded, hippie, half-naked. Uh, they like to smoke, do pot, drink, do drugs, bring uh, people and have hippie music. Now, as a as a person who's invited a friend, maybe I'll be flexible on certain things, but maybe I'll be like, listen, 
you cannot have uh, open uh, public display of affection. You can't smoke pot. You can't do drugs. You can't drink alcohol. Maybe I would tell him all this. And uh, maybe I would even tell him when we are praying, you need to be decent. You need to cover yourself. So I need to balance it out. But why? Because the day this guy leaves, he leaves my house, then I'll be stuck with the people in the house and uh, there'll be many hurt feelings. There'll be people who will be very disappointed. So Sheikh Tamim or the Qatari leadership doesn't want to face a permanent backlash. And in the, you know, the last thing what you need is after the FIFA gets over, there is a complete chaos and meltdown. And understand this much. All the infrastructure that uh, Qatar has built, okay, at the end, they'll have to sell this to the very same public. So, uh, and my prediction, which I've told you already before, all this that they have built will have to be demolished, will be pointless, useless, because you're just doing it for one particular event. So, Zakir and I coming down to um, Qatar, I, I look at it as Mickey Mouse coming down to visit uh, a country. I, I don't take him seriously. His opinions are a joke. He's not an authority. He's not appointed by Islam, by Prophet Muhammad or by Allah or the Muslim world. They have not appointed him as the voice of reason and uh, um, the authority of Islam. Nobody has. He's just a self-appointed bozo. And uh, the only people who, hey, Zakir Naik, hey, are these, I'm, I'm sorry to say, for lack of a better term, uneducated people who don't have a perspective about life, who don't have common sense, who have not traveled, who have not seen the world, they take this clown seriously. He just has a following of sheep, uh, two million whatever followers, who take, uh, in chapter surah, uh, you know, chapter surah verse 7, paragraph 8 of uh, Allah Ta'ala says, in, you know, Prophet Muhammad, blah, 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 he'll keep going on and on. He's a joke, man. You know, I've even uploaded that video, five minutes uh, errors of Zakir Naik. He, 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 nobody takes him seriously. Nobody takes him seriously. That is why he's banned in so many countries. That is why he, is, uh, he has a criminal, uh, you know, wanted uh, this thing uh, in so many countries. Uh, only place where he can stay is maybe Malaysia and uh, hopefully in uh, this thing. And uh, he's a smart businessman. He is making money. He charges a sh hell lot of money, shit load of money, just to speak. So he's no saint. So, if you are a big fan of his, all the best to you. For me, he's just a joke. For me, he's just a clown. Like I call him Mickey Mouse. Uh, in fact, poor Mickey Mouse. Uh, people uh, take him seriously. Fine. Up to you. He's your God. He's not mine. You can worship him. I don't give a damn. For me, he's just another old man who is, you know, like Jake Paul, like... Uh, all the social media, the thing he is taking advantage of uh, those who have no brains and they worship him. Good for you. Okay. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. What do you think of Zakir Naik's fatwa and uh, religious opinions and visiting Qatar? I don't see it as a problem. I just see him as a guest who's coming down there and Sheikh Tamim or whoever have called him just to keep you know everyone happy. That's about it. I don't see any problem in praying. And I don't have any issues with what they're doing. As long as, like they, like I've always told you, you don't hurt and harm anyone. Why should any one of us have a problem? And we should be flexible as we are going as guests to Qatar. We should respect them. Uh, so a little bit of praying and all that shouldn't be an issue, man. Anyway, good, bad, ugly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is me signing off. You guys take care.